Nationals. So we're going to go straight into game one here. He's facing Nick Patelis, whose team is Groudon, Talonflame, Togetic, Gengar, Rayquaza, and Ferrothorn. Here we go. So he's made it 6-1 with that Magic Cup. That is fantastic. Um, we'll get into how he actually made that decision. But anyway, we've got the Talonflame and the Gengar from Nick. And we have the Xerneas and the Smurgle coming from Nicholas. So, uh, interesting leads. We didn't see that Magic Carp just yet, but who knows? He might bring it out a bit later <laughs> on. It could be the secret weapon. It could be. Uh, definitely um, a unique choice there. But, um, so, we've got a couple of options here. We could see the, uh, the Gengar Mega Revolve here. We've got Talonflame here, who's got the, uh, obviously, the priority moves with the uh, flying type moves. But we do see the Mega Evolution coming out here. He seems to be quite comfortable there. Uh, the ability basically making it so he, uh, his opponent can't switch out. We do see the Dark Void come from the Smeagol as well, and it does connect. Uh, Gengar has avoided the attack, though, and uh, the Talonflame seems to have gone to sleep. It's, uh, and we see the sludge bomb here go from the Mega Gengar onto the Xerneas. Oh, and it connects. Connects, and he oh, gets the poison. No. Oh, Gets the poison. <laughs> That's, that, it hasn't been a, an optimal start for, for Nick. We did see the, uh, Smeagol move first, so it is a Choice Scarf Smeagol. Uh, you know, originally when I first saw this, first saw this, lead, I thought, you know, uh, Nick Patelis just... Since we've got two Nick's guys, uh, Nicholas Bing will just be referred to as uh, as Bing, as Bing. he's more commonly known in the community. So, Bing leading with the uh, Zerny Smeagol, I thought it was at a bit of a damn uh, disadvantage, but... I don't think that... Oh, it does. Sorry. I, I, I was going to say, that poison might be just enough to make it live just a little slither, but unfortunately, it gets the KO on there. So, that is a, like... That's unfortunate uh, start um, right there. Yeah, but it's still still not all is lost. He sends in the Salamence here. He still has Smeagol's intact. It's Choice Scarfed. He can get an, go for another attempt on the Dark Void on the Gengar. Um, and then, you know, try and get the Hyper Voice off on the Salamence before, uh, you know, try and get the damage up. I mean, losing the Xerneas early, that is a big blow. But certainly, with uh, with a big variant team, Nyx is, uh, Bingham's certainly not lacking in any sort of uh, power. No, no, most definitely not. We do see the Mega Salamence coming into here. Uh, Gengar has decided to protect, which I think was a smart play here. Um, Talonframe does still get the sleep. Uh, doesn't wake up this turn. Uh, it does go for the Dark Void, as you predicted, Matt. Uh, but that Gengar has protected itself. We are going to see the Hyper Voice come out from the Salamence, and it does connect to that Talonflame, doing just under 50% um, uh, to the... Um, to the Talonflame, so definitely can't take another one of those. So he's he's going to have to rely on either getting a wake, uh, wake up in the next turn, uh, or unfortunately either sacking it. Or if he does want to keep it around, he will have to switch it out. The protect was definitely the smart move there. He's trying oh. to stall out for the wake up, and we see the Talonflame does wake up, throwing out the Brave Bird into the Smeagol, most likely. Yeah. Unlikely to KO though because of the Intimidate from Salamence earlier. Uh, unfortunate with that, and we do see the Dark Void again. Just. Spam in the Dark Void, and it does connect. Do we see a double sleep here? Yes. I think we do. Yep, so that is a double sleep. So, uh, Bing does bring it back with the Dark Void connecting on both Pokemon. Um, that is going to uh, rack up a little, uh, some damage, uh, and potentially get the KO on the, uh, the, uh, the Talonflame, but he does go for the Tailwind, uh, obviously for speed control. So, feeling quite confident with that play there. I think that was more of a necessity. If Talonflame wakes up and goes for Tailwind, <coughs> then suddenly his, uh, his Scarf Smeagol is no longer the fastest thing on the field. So, definitely, definitely a smart move there, rather than just going straight for the, uh, straight for the um, Hyper Voice. The other thing to note is that Talonflame move before it was put back to sleep again. So it's got another guaranteed turn of sleep, and therefore, if it stays in, it will not be able to get a uh, Tailwind up before Salamence is in a position to KO it. Yeah, most definitely. So we do see the sleep uh, for the Talonflame here, and he is spamming the Dark Void again. Gengar is already asleep. We do see the Hyper Voice come into play. That is going to connect and KO that Talonflame. It does a hefty amount to that uh, Gengar as well. So uh, Bing definitely uh, wanting to control it with the uh, sleep there, not taking see the Gengar any wake up though. Oh, it did wake up. Wake up one turn and just... Ooh! It hangs on with a slither. It does get the speed drop though. Um, uh, he's still got the Tailwind though, so he's still faster. Still faster, yep, most definitely. It does get the wake up, um, but because the Smeagol was faster, um, the Gengar was able to wake up before he was able to, um, sorry, after he was able to fire off that Dark Void. So we do see the Groudon come into play here, uh, and another Groudon, um, which is the answer for Nick. So we see both of them uh, primal at this stage. I believe that is Nick's Groudon that is primal first. 
Um, yep, that is. Oh, sorry, my apologies. That is Bing. Well, it is yep. Nick, but we're kind of calling the Bing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would, it would primal first. He's got the tailwind up. Uh, primal, you know, goes in order ah, of speed. Ah, interesting. Goes interesting. in order of speed. So. It goes, but it does take into consideration the tailwind uh, yes. as well. Okay, upon entry. Okay, that's interesting to know. Okay, cool. So... Bit of trouble here for uh, Nick right here. He does have the tailwind. He's got the ground on. Speed control is good. And he's going to be able to fire off a price of a blade. It's going to be super effective to both Pokemon as well, mm -hmm. being that Gengar has lost his Levitate due to the Mega Evolution. It'll be, uh, it will be interesting. I mean, he can he can do that. The other thing is, though, he is relying on the... Uh He's relying on the Presbyterian Blades to hit both Pokemon. Uh, Presbyterian Blades only has 85% accuracy, so... Doesn't have the gravity up either. Doesn't have the gravity up either. So, um, you know, he is relying on the double hit. If there is a... If, uh... Nick, if, uh... Nick is lucky enough to get in the water and his Pokemon, he can still pull this back. And right. I believe there's only uh, two turns of Tailwind left. And right, both okay. Pokemon are awake, so they can easily just double protect and stall out the tail, Tailwind. Yeah, most definitely. So this... It does see a switch out here. And we are going to see the Rayquaza come into play. That's a uh, very, very smart move there. You know, Rayquaza immune to the Precipice Blades. I uh, like the carries extreme speed, which can pick off the Salamence sure. before anything can happen. So we do see the Groudon take a hit, but it is going to take a Hyper Voice as well. And I think that's all she wrote for that one. So Groudon does go down. Uh, taking about 80% from Price of All Blades and then having the remaining 20% done through the Hyper Voice. Uh, we do see Gen Gengar come back into play here. So both Pokemon are under 50%, uh, giving, uh, I would say, Bing a very command... Um, uh, he's in a good position at this stage. Uh, I wouldn't say a commanding lead, it's just a good position uh, because it's really anyone's game still at this stage. Yes, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how... I think, um, I think Nick has the advantage so far, but both his uh, remaining two Pokemon are... You know, at less than half HP. Yeah, most definitely. So we see a Protect come from Salamence, Protect come from Gengar. Um, going to see if the Rayquaza goes for the Protect, and he does. Um, obviously trying to stall out the Tailwind there, and try and get the Speed Control just back there. We see the Groudon go for that Fire Punch onto the Gengar, but it does Protect. And then we do see that the Tailwind has ended now. So... Interesting now that the Tailwind isn't in play. We should, I would say that the Rayquaza um, being ha being able to icy, I'm not icy. I mean, extreme speed could be an option. Yeah, extreme speed wasn't necessary now though because uh, Salmon was already at minus one speed from the icy wind earlier. That's correct as well. Um, okay, so we do see the speed drop um, from the Groudon and the Salamence is out. And we do see the Waterfall being its ability is able to bypass Groudon's ability. That's going to connect and that's going to be game uh, to Nick. Um, so, very interesting first game. Um, I think that was a bit of back and forth there. Uh, but ultimately, Nick uh, dealt really well with the pressure in that first game. True. I think also um, being played incredibly well. I mean, he lost the uh, lost the Zunis quite early uh, with bit of a bad roll against him, but, you know, he made a very strong effort to pull that back. Yep, most and definitely. And definitely showed what he's capable of. It will be interesting to see, though, how he, how he responds. I mean, um, Nick now knows that being Smeagol is scarfed, whether that has a certain influence, but it's also, I think the Gengar, Nick's Gengar is going to be crucial. You know, the Icy Wind can drop the uh, speeds down. You know, if he gets a speed drop on Salamence, that means Rayquaza now speeds the Salamence. If he gets a speed drop on Bing's Groudon, that means his Groudon is now faster. So, getting the Gengar, you know, doesn't have to preserve it, but it does need to get an Icy Wind off sometime earlier in the game. We might see the secret weapon, you never know. Oh, <laughs> As I said, the, we will go into why he has bought that little <laughs> secret weapon. There is a story behind it, but we are about to go into game two with Nick uh, having the advantage, so we're going to cross live to that stream right now. Uh, we see the Salamence and the Smurgle come out with the Groudon and the Talonflame. So, as I said, uh, quite similar uh, matchups. I don't think he bought the Groudon uh, first up. It was the Ganga Talonflame from memory, and it was the Smurgle and the uh, Salamence that he bought last time, was it? Smurgle's only lead last time. That Smurgle's only lead. That's correct, and he unfortunately got the poison on that, yeah. which... Uh, just that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the way the hacks rolls. <laughs> but I think uh, I think uh, Bing's in a good position here. I mean, he can dark void. He can dark void off before Talonflame can taunt. We've seen that uh, Smeagol can live a Brave Bird after an Intimidate drop. Sure. Uh, we also, if uh, Bing makes a hard read, he can also just dark void and Tailwind and 
counter any efforts that uh, Nick makes to tail with his own talent flame. Yeah, most definitely. We actually did see uh, Alex nearly fall into the Nihal's trap with the uh, with the Scarf Smeagol. He got him off guard. He did switch it up from his uh, previous regionals. We are seeing another Scarf Smeagol, so it, it seems to be uh, a semi-popular thing uh, that's been coming out. But uh, we do see the Mega Salamance come into play here. Um, so we see the Groudon protect. Um, obviously, uh, gauging that he might be wanting to go for a Dark Void. We see Talonflame going for the Tailwind here. Um, obviously getting that priority uh, due to its ability. And we do see the Dark Void come into play. Groudon protects oh, and it avoids the attack. So that's uh, pretty unfortunate there for uh, being right there. But we do see the Hyper Voice. And that's going to do a solid chunk to the Talonflame. Definitely can't take another one of those. Yes, but I, I, don't, I, don't think, uh, I don't think Nick played to his outs there at all. I think the safer move would have been to use Tailwind on the Salamence, just in case Talonflame did go for the Tailwind, yeah. just to sort of keep the speed tees even. But now he's, uh, at a both disadvantage. His, now he's at a very big disadvantage. That Smeagol can be removed quite easily before, uh, you know, before he can get attack off. But we see him remove the Smeagol. Bring in the Xerneas. Okay. Uh, interesting choice there. Um, definitely not playing how he was the first game. First game, it was all about, all right, let's fire off the Dark Void one after the other, make sure we control the sleep. We do see the Brave Bird come off from the Talon Flame. It's going to connect to that Salamence. Doesn't do a hell of a lot, though. Um, so we do a fire, we see a fire punch uh, from the Groudon as well. It goes to the Xerneas, and again, like, it's doing it comfortably, taking the damage comfortably. It's obviously doing a, a heavy chunk, but it's uh, d definitely not going into the yellow. So. Well, both Pokemon are still intimidated from uh, when Salmons came into the field. We see Salmons, you know, Nick Bingham finally get his Tailwind up, uh, which sort of puts him in a slightly better position. I believe that Xerneas could probably take another Brave Bird, um, but instead he's going to withdraw it, maybe switching the Smeagol, sacrifice the Smeagol, and just uh, continually hyper voice with Salamence to spread the damage up. Yep, and that's exactly what it seems like he is doing. Gets another hyper voice off, and that Talonflame is going down. Uh, does a decent amount to the Groudon as well. Uh, we do see the Rock Slide come out from the Groudon. That's something that uh, we don't actually see, we haven't really seen on the stream. Uh, it does connect with that uh, Salamence, does a, 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 a modest amount. Uh, it does a little bit to that Smeagol as well. Um, so, interesting choice there. Um, uh, do you think that would have probably been the wisest move uh, on his end? I, um, well, it was interesting. It was no good to note the Talonflame didn't move first. So, right. it wasn't using a flying type move. I would say I would likely be going for a taunt or something to stop the Xerneas for the, on sure. the Geomancy off. Um, going for the Rock Slide, I think it might have been the, like, the safer option. He certainly doesn't. You know, Fire Punch or Press Blade certainly can't do anything to Salamence. Sure. Salamence is still probably the biggest threat out there. Yep, most um, definitely. So we do see Nick uh, bring out his uh, Ray Prizer now. It's also be interesting to note though, Nick Patel <coughs> only has one more turn of Tailwind left, whereas Bingham still has two. So there's still going to be a turn after this, Bingham will have a decisive speed advantage. Sure, so of course. It's got to be, it's, Nick really makes to, needs to make the most of this turn Not in order to, you know, maybe stall that next turn. 100%. And we also note that Salamence is still alive as well, where, um, or still um, healthy, you should yep. say, uh, whereas his uh, Talonflame has been knocked out, so he's not able to uh, fire off another Tailwind. We do see the Mega Rayquaza come out in this one, so he seems quite confident in Mega evolving it. Uh, Delta Stream is coming to play now, so obviously overriding uh, Groudon's weather. We do see a extreme speed. It's going straight for that Smurgle, and it is going to get the KO on that. So, uh, pretty safe option with that one. Obviously, didn't want to take any more uh, Dark Voids. We see the Hyper Voice come out from the Salamence. Groudon hangs on by the Slither, but that's unfortunate because now it is that Rock type move is using against it because of the ability of Rayquaza. So. Interesting choice there. I think it was his only real choice. He just needs to get. He needs to rack up the damage because now he's got Rayquaza. He's got the extreme speed. He can remove the Salamence from play. The sure. only downside is though, um, if Nick Patel's does not extreme speed, he will lose Rayquaza because now both Xerneas and Salamence they are the fastest Pokemon in the field. Yep. And with Groudon weakened as it is, a dazzling gleam from Xerneas would probably knock out both Pokemon there. Yep, most definitely. Um, so. Uh, Matty Rowe reckons he's going to see a uh, uh, extreme speed going straight to that Salamence. He reckons that's the safe play to go. Uh, Option B, mm -hmm. double protect this turn. Yep. And makes things interesting. If he double protects this turn, he stalls out Nicholas's last turn of Tailwind. Sure. Uh, which then means Rayquaza is faster than Xerneas, but still not faster than uh, Salamence. So we do see the extreme speed going for the Salamence. 
and that is KO on that yep. Salamence. Uh, now, we're going to see the Xerneas here if it goes for that Dazzling Gleam, which it does. Uh, and that potentially is going to KO both Pokemon. We'll have a look there. Yep, very convincingly KO, KOs both Pokemon. Uh, so now we are down to, I believe, Nick's got uh, one and Bing's got uh, two. two. So it's uh, interesting um, to, to see that how that plays off now. Um, um, we'll, be, we'll be interested. I think, you know... Nick has certainly played this game very well. Yeah. Um, sorry, Bingham has certainly played this game very well. You see he had the Gengar in the in the back, so that's um it's certainly interesting to note. Uh, it's also good to note that uh, Nicholas uh, he'll have to rely on Fire Punch here to take on the Gengar, but also Gengar is now faster than Xerneas, it could remove the Xerneas, but I still can't see how Gengar can pull this back against both of these Pokemon here. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with that. I, I don't see a, any reason why you'd want a Mega Revolve here, obviously making it, you know, eat a, a basically a, either a Price of Blades um, from his uh, ground or another type yeah. ground move, um, and it, it wouldn't take that well at all. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would say that he would be going for that Xerneas with that uh, Sludge Bomb. Uh, and seeing how well... Okay, he goes for the Shadow Ball. Uh, he's going straight for that Groudon. That's an interesting choice. I think I think he was, you know, maybe expecting uh, Nicholas... Nick was expecting Bing to protect the Xerneas. Right. Um, you know, with the Sludge Bomb in was an obvious play. You know, maybe try and rack up some damage on the Groudon. But uh, even then, we saw that Shadow Ball. It did less than 50% to Groudon. So yeah. he's... Bing is still in a certainly a very optimal position here. And now he does have that uh, Geomancy up. Yep. We see the fire punch coming through from Granite. It's going to connect. And oh, goodness, that is a KO. <laughs> Without that Mega, he doesn't have that the additional bulk. Yep. And, unfo and unfortunately, he just didn't want to risk it, as, especially with uh, Grand-type moves. So, uh, yeah, as I said, Nick played really well in that game. Uh, I, I thought he had control over a lot of situations. Uh, and just had Bingham a, li a little bit on the back foot uh, towards the end of it, it as well. It was interesting that he brought in the Rayquaza before the Gengar. When he brought in the Rayquaza, I thought he must not have not, not have Gengar in the back. But um, if he brought in the Rayquaza and kept... Sorry, if he brought in the Gengar and stole out the Tailwind, he could have been able to, you know, pick off the Xerneas. And that leaves the... We've seen the Rayquaza with Waterfall. We could have been left with Waterfall to pick off the Groudon. So... Nick certainly played, uh, Bingham certainly played very, very well. He um, his Smeagol Salmon Sleeve was excellent. Yep. Um, despite what I think was a bit of a stuff up turn one. But, yeah, I th it would be interesting to see if he'd switched up which potential Mega he sent out, f nah, Nick sent out first there. Yeah, very much so. Um, and it's also important to note that, uh, that uh, uh, Nick does have the Kangaskhan as well. We haven't seen that being brought out. He, he seems to opt for the uh, the Mega Evolution of Salamence over the Kangaskhan. So. Well, it's well, Ray Kangaskhan does not have a favorable matchup against Gengar. It yep. does not like Groudon. Can bolt, uh, you know, it's not. You can't tank it, but it can certainly survive a number of hits from Kangaskhan. Rayquaza, Mega Rayquaza, is faster than Kangaskhan and can. Depending on you know the set, can one hit KO yep. Mega Kangaskhan? So Salamence is certainly the uh, the better choice there. Most definitely. So we do see the Smurgle Salamence lead from Bingham, and we see the Ganga Talonflame lead from Nick. So uh, interesting leads here. Um, obviously, we know that now that that Smurgle is scarfed, so uh, could potentially go straight for that Dark Void, try and get that uh, double sleep. Um, happening there. He is intimidated as well, so don't believe he's going to be able to KO that Smeagol, even if he did want to fire off a uh, Brave Bird. Not unless he got a critical hit. Yeah, but um, it's important. We, Nick Bingham needs... You know, as the Smeagol's, the Smeagol's Salmons is a great lead, but he does need that to get that Dark Void to hit. Yes. Um, if not, then he's going to be as much in the back foot as he was in game one. Yep, most definitely. So we see the uh, Mega Gengar make its appearance here. Um... We see the Salamence also mega evolving here, so uh, obviously uh, Nick feels that that Gengar uh, does serve a purpose as a mega at this time round. Uh, feels quite confident with that. We do see the Dark Void connect. Uh, looks like it is going to hit both Pokemon. Oh, oh Gengar, Gengar avoided it. Oh, that's um, 
That is interesting. So we see the icy wind come into play here, and it does get the speed drop. This could be either really good or really bad here, depending what Salmons does. If Salmons goes for a hyper voice, it's bad. If Salmons goes for a tailwind, he still has a speed advantage. Yeah, most definitely. So that talent flame is now asleep. So it goes for the hyper voice, which is unfortunate, uh, being that. Now that that Smeagol now has a speed drop. So the question now becomes, does that Gengar, is that Gengar now faster than that Smeagol with the speed drop, even though it is Scarfed? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, the speed drop from Ice Wind wouldn't negate the Scarf, so at best you have Smeagol uh, about 140, 139 speed stat. Gengar, without any investment, can easily pass that. So Okay, fantastic. So yes, okay, we see the Gengar go for that Sludge Bomb, and we see Bingham only get a sleep on that Talonflame, so very well played by Nick, he got a, a bit of uh, good fortune with that missing on the Gengar, and we do see now the Talonflame coming, um, sorry, the uh, Salamence using the uh, Tailwind now as well, so uh, unfortunate that he lost that Smeagol um, in the... Uh, straight off the bat, we see the, um, the Xerneas coming into play here as well, um, so... Uh, Nick's got an uh, it, it, Nick's got an interesting uh, sort of command on this at the moment. Uh, Bingham still does have his uh, both Pokemon awake, but that Salamence has been critically injured now. Um, so we see the Gengar is going to protect here, uh, and we see the Talonflame wake up and go for his own Tailwind. Um, so very fortunate with the uh, sleep hacks here, in the sense that he was able to um, wake use that, up, we wake up, tailwind. and go straight for that Tailwind. But we do see the Xerneas uh, go for that Geomancy. Uh, felt that that was probably uh, probably one of the better plays for Bingham right there. It was interesting to note the the crucial crucial thing that turned it all about would Talonflame wake up, and would it either would it Brave Bird or would it Tailwind? Um, we've seen, you know, if. Sal if the Talonflame had uh, had Brave Birded and you know Nick gone for a Sludge Bomb onto the Xerneas, you know he could have removed the Xerneas and the Salamence, and being would have been great thing, great you know difficulty. Yeah. Uh, I still think that was an excellent read by uh, by Bingham though. He he believed you know that better uh, Nick would be better served by getting a Tailwind up to match uh, Bingham's own Tailwind. So going for that Geomancy means that even when Tailwind goes down, he's still at plus two speed. Yep, most definitely. Uh, okay, so we see Nick bringing his route on now. Um, so, as we mentioned before, the Salamence is critically injured at this stage. Uh, still hanging in there and still able to fire off those Hyper Voices. Um, so we see Desolate Land come in with the uh, Primal Granon's ability. Um, be interesting to see in terms of what the Gengar decides to do here. Um, is he going to go for that Sludge Bomb? Uh, but or the Icy Wind. Um, I'd probably say the Icy Wind might be probably maybe the better play here. I, I would be more interested in what the Xerneas goes for. If it goes, you know, does uh, Nicholas Bank, uh, does Bingham Bank on the Dazzling Beam being enough to KO that Gengar? Speed at the moment would be Xerneas, Gengar, Groudon, and Salamence right. with all the speed drops factored in. So Salamence is going last and it's critically injured. So you see the Dazzling Gleam here. He wants to remove the Gengar, which gives, which forces uh, Nick to make a choice on the ground. On does he target the Xerneas or does he target the Salamence? Most definitely. So uh, Nick's Gengar goes down there. We see the Fire Punch come into play, and it's going to connect on the Xerneas, and it does a hefty amount as well. It does about 60%. We see the Hyper Voice come from the Salamence and faints the ground on. Uh, yeah, with uh, Gengar removed, Hyper Voice is now a single target move. It's no longer sure. spread, uh, and Hyper Voice is a clean. As a single type move, it's a clean to hit KO on nearly all variants of Groudon. Yep, fantastic. So, uh, as I said, Bingham uh, in a commanding uh, mm. position at this stage. Uh, last Pokemon he's got is his Rayquaza. Um, unable to Mega Revolve it, unfortunately, uh, just due to the fact that he's already Mega Revolved um, uh, his Gengar. So, he does go for the Protect. Uh, I believe Tailwind is still up on uh, Bingham's side of the field, so he could be looking to stall that out. Um, yeah, that was that was the goal. Uh, Nick still has Nick Patel still has Patsla, sorry, still has one more turn of tailwind. But Rayquaza is Xerneas is naturally faster than Rayquaza. It has a Geomancy up, so it still has a speed advantage. So it basically comes down to can Rayquaza, you know, KO Xerneas with extreme speed, survive hyper voices, and just basically clean it tank enough attacks. We don't see him go for the extreme speed. Uh, we see Bingham get the Moonblast off. And, and it survives on one, and we see the Focus Sash revealed. 
st I don't think that'll still make much of a difference at the end. Um, no, I don't think so either. He is going for that Dragon Ascent though, and it is fired straight at that Xerneas, and that's going to pick up the KO. Uh, and that is a critical hit, but it gets his defenses dropped. It's not going to make all of the difference, because all now Bingham needs to do is fire off an attack and have it connect, which it is going to happen. And we see <laughs> Mr. Magikarp yep. himself take the match. Um, He's full of surprises, this one is. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think he surprised everyone last year when he went 9-0 in nine, uh, 9 wins, 0 losses in Swiss. Yep. Uh, yeah, certainly.